Hey guys, it's Ed, back with another episode of the DIY CNC turret lathe. This week, we'll be making the spindle, so brace yourself for plenty of lathe footage. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Last installment, we made the tool posts for this lathe, card to that video here. We're working exclusively in steel this week, mostly 4140 and 1045. Jared started off with the spindle shaft. I talked him into doing this because I thought it was a little bit above my skill level on the lathe at this point, but uh, he did a great job on it. Ended up only having around three tenths of run out, which I think is pretty good for a spindle with no grinding involved and more than good enough for the task at hand. You'll have to bear with us through some of this spotty footage here. Uh, we figured out a much better way to film on the slant partway through this video. So this means you can expect more lathe footage from us in the future because filming on this thing has always been a major hang up for us. This mandrel that Jared made is responsible for that 3 tenth accuracy. It allowed us to finish turn the bearing journals very concentric to the 3C taper of the bore. If we needed the run out to be any lower than this, we could finish grind the spindle taper with the spindle assembled and running. But in this case, like I said, 3 tenths more than good enough.
sweet. Before anyone freaks out, the part was not running out like that during the turning operations. I just stuck it back on the chuck real quick to clean up these threads and deburr a little bit. My first cuts on our new 770M, which we didn't quite have the fog buster installed on yet, so I broke out the trusty spray bottle full of Qualicum. Just putting some flats on the end of this draw tube real quick so we can get a wrench on it and tighten it up. We ended up using an old spindle out of John's first 1100 as the raw stock for the spindle housing here. It happened to be just the right size tubing we needed for that. And unfortunately our uh, machining footage for that, which we did on the VF2, didn't quite turn out. So here's the fusion simulation footage just so you can get an idea of what we did. This floating deep race ball bearing at the tail end of the spindle allows the shaft to grow and shrink with heat changes without causing any binding or affecting the preload of the angular contact bearings at the nose. And we have an oil seal at each end of the shaft. The smaller of the two spacers that we made serves to transfer the preload nuts force through the oil seal to the tail bearing and the larger spacer transfers the force on the tail bearing through to the inner races of the angular contact bearings, which applies their preload. That's it for this week. Stay tuned for the final installment in which we'll get this machine all finished up and making some parts. Thanks for watching.